Sello. Here. Supervisor first. Here. Everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. So the first item will be to adopt the agenda. I think we have one item that we won't be having tonight, and that's uh, with respect to you know, an item that Tim Moot would be discussing. So, yeah, so item, item, item number 10, Carnworth Grants. So the engineer is not able to attend. He's not feeling well. So other than that, right. do we need to make a motion to amend that? Jim? Yes. Okay. Second. Motion second to amend uh, the agenda, deleting number item number 10, Carnworth Grants. Do I have a motion? I mean, do I have a vote? Yay. Yeah. Um, Yay. Okay, yes, we're all good. seeing no nays or uh, abstentions to vote passed. Uh, the next item is to acknowledge the minutes. There's a typo in uh, the uh, motion. It's really to acknowledge the minutes of September 26th, and also I'm adding October 3rd. Mr. Clerk, is that correct? Okay, so do I have a motion? Make a motion. I'll second it. Okay, motion and second to, well, I guess first I'll first do the uh, September 26th um, you know, minutes, so this motion and second. You know, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. The next one is to acknowledge the minutes of October 3rd. That was the short meeting where the budget was presented. Second. second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Uh, to, to move this along, I'll uh, hold off on my discussion on budget until right before you know we have our department heads coming up so I'll talk about that uh, let's see where is Bill Ponte come on up sir yeah, Mr. Ponte uh, is going to talk to the board as part of our ongoing uh, series of items uh, to talk about the sports museum. Bill and Barb will be speaking you know, tonight uh, to uh, talk to us about uh, the sports museum. Thank you. Good, how are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan. Joey, can you move? Joey. 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 Can you move that up one more yep. one more square? Thanks, there you sir. Go. Thanks, sir. There you go. My name is Bill Ponte, I'm the president of the Sports Museum of Dutchess County. Uh, Joe Cavasini is a board member. He is our curator. He's also the liaison for the town and the board and you know the museum. So he has a few words to talk about, and then I'll talk and my wife Barbara. Thank you, Supervisor, members of the town board, for having the sports museum before you guys this evening. Uh, the Sports Museum of Dutchess County has been a faithful and loyal tenant to the town of Wappinger since 20, 2005, actually, uh, under the Ruggiero administration. And in 2016, undertook a major renovation, and in 2019, reopened its doors to the public with our Legends of Dutchess exhibition. Since then, of course, being closed for a number of years due to renovations, and of course being closed due to COVID-19, the sports museum has undergone a number of financial challenges. Fortunately, this year we have seen nearly a thousand uh, visitors to the museum, most of which, actually I believe it's 74% are town of Wappinger residents. We no, sorry. No problem. And so with that, we have a number of challenges with operating the museum. Of course, everyone will remember in 2016, we had the water pipe that burst in our museum, which sparked us to launch these renovations. Uh, but again, in 2019, 2020, 2021, we 
were open despite COVID-19. In 2021, the supervisor and I applied jointly for a grant through Dutchess County government, which we were able to get for $150,000. That was a CDBG grant from Dutchess County government. The next one was an MIG grant for $50,000, and these two grants combined were to create a community center for all ages within the Reef Cultural Center, which is the building where the Sports Museum of Dutchess County is housed. With that information, the Sports Museum has been without water and heat since 2016. This leaves an adverse effect when we have our seniors and our young people, and even during our Think Differently tours, our, young, our guests that are uh, specially disabled, they have no bathrooms to use. We have no heat, so we are forced to be open between April and the end of October. So we're stuck between a rock and a hard place, if you would. Uh, what the Sports Museum is requesting tonight, two different things. One is a budget line within the 2023 budget for some specialty funding, which would help the Sports Museum own up to its mission of preserving the history of sports, the history here in town of Wappinger within our building. And then secondary, to authorize the use of funds from the two grants that we've received from Dutchess County government to move forward with installing heat and water within the Reese Cultural Center. We understand that there are a couple different bids and estimates that were given by the town engineer, but the sports museum and also when I worked for the town, uh, we sought other estimates from plumbers to do that water work, including a quote for around $35,000 to do the plumbing. So we ask that the town board consider expending those funds that were provided to you by Dutchess County government. And then Barb Ponte will talk to you about the need for a budget line. And we- Well, we already have a budget line. Oh. It has to be approved. Well, she will talk about, again, the need okay. for that. Thank you, Supervisor. Before we move forward, if you could just unlock that door back there, I appreciate it. Thank you. Just wanna make sure we have full egress, just in case. So one, one last question for uh, Mr. Cavasini. So I know we have the $150,000 grant and the 50, and estimates we're getting for the water, as an example, are running at $100,000 based on the estimate that CPL did for us. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to rebalance that 150 to move 50,000 over to support the water, because that's what it would cost based on engineer. I understand that yeah. the cost you received was 35,000. It's probably changed since then. Mm -hmm. Of course. But what I want to do is see if we can rebalance and maybe get one of the projects done. Of course, and uh, that process would start uh, from you folks here. The town would have to formally request Dutchess County Planning to entertain reevaluating the grant application. Uh, the project that, again, the supervisor and I jointly submitted included a number of different improvements to that property, including a parking lot and other improvements within it. But again, at the end of the day, it all goes toward that final goal of having a community center for all ages in that building. So I believe that that process yeah. would start with the supervisor, and of course, as your county legislator, I would advocate for that up at the county level. And that's what you know, Tim was going to talk about, but unfortunately he's ill, so okay. he can't speak tonight, so we'll do that at the next meeting. Okay. Great. He has more details and I think some up-to-date information on, on that, including costs as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hi, Barb. Good evening. Can everybody hear? Yeah. Can you okay. introduce yourself for the audience, uh, both here and then on camera? Okay, I'll be very brief. I've been with the Sports Museum since 1992. And it seemed that at every meeting we attended, we were looking for a home. And then between Joe Enneser and Bill Emsley, who I'm sure everyone here remembers, we found a home in 2005 and signed a revocable license agreement. Following a ribbon cutting with Senator Hillary Rodden Clinton and many dignitaries from the village, we were granted to rent a portion of the dormitory building at Cowanworth Farms to display sports, athletics, and memorabilia. Then came the frozen pipes, the building was condemned, and those days 
our working budget would have averaged around $13,800 with no problems with expenses. The expected budget that will be presented this year in October to our board will be for $7,000, which includes rent, insurance, optimum, and that takes the majority of the $7,000 of our expenses. Anticipated income is $4,500 for next year. So you can see how we are balancing at this point. But we hope to, now that COVID is over, to resume our Hall of Fame induction dinners, which was a big income maker for us. And we rely on donations and anticipate to hold extra events next year, hoping that we have a little bit of water, maybe, and <laughs> go from there. I thank you all for listening. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Bill? Hi, I'm Bill Ponte. I'm the president of the Sports Museum, and I've been here for 25 years. Uh, <coughs> the Sports Museum is something that is, is a family thing. I, I can tell you a quick story. When I heard about the pipes being burst, okay, I was on the phone and we had a, a price to have the ceiling fixed. We had a price to do the walls. We had a price to do the floors. And putting everything together, you sort of said, well, the hell with it, let it go. And then I remember a day that I was doing a tour in a museum a year or so before that. And there was an older man and a younger boy and I find out it's the grandfather and his grandson. And they're going through the museum and they get to the golf room. And I see the young boy grab his, the pants of the old man. And he says, hey, Pop, is that what you look like when you were a young guy? There was a picture <laughs> that they went in 1953. And he says, yeah. And he says, well, that, and then the next thing I know, the two of them are hugging each other and you see tears coming down the eyes of the older man. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm not going to give that up. You know, we, we had, you, you know, you talk about a sports museum who scored my, m most points and touchdowns and things like that. But something like that is a life story. You can't put a price on that. You know, and, and I decided we're going to fix it. We're going to do it. And that's what really, really turned it around. Because there's so many people that come in here, sometimes a lot, a lot of them are senior citizens. And it's the first time they saw their son or husband in a baseball uniform, an umpire's uniform, or something like that. And it really touches their heart. And that's what this is about. And you know, uh, the other day, I had a, a, a show, or a television show with Supervisor Thurston. And I told him about, you know, I looked at what Carnworth Farms looks like. It's a beautiful place. You know, the, 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 it's breathtaking. And it's underutilized. I think with, you know, with the proper thing, the, what, what he's trying to do now to bring more things in there and our museum, uh, we got a grant for $20,000 from the county. We had to use, we had to be specifically for the use. We got computers, we got some desks, we got some chairs, we got some books geared toward the youth, youth of the area. What we're trying to do is tell them about the rich history of sports in Dutchess County, okay? And we had to put a name on this, you know, on this room, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, this is three, four months ago. And who did the most for sports in this area was Ralph Holt. So we decided at that time to name it after Ralph Holt. And you know, as we know, the poor man passed away a couple, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. But I think that, you know, that would keep his name going. You know, everybody loved Ralph. It's hard to find somebody that didn't. And he was a, he was a wonderful worker here. And he did a lot for the youth. And you know, with, with that, with his name and us working with the youth, it's going to make it more of a family, family friendly building. And of course, what they were talking about is right now, because of the COVID, 
We had we used to make money on bowling tournaments, on golf tournaments, on races, and things like this. With the COVID, we weren't able to do that. But at the same time, we continued to have to pay our rent. We paid our insurance. We paid the Optima bill. We paid the so our money went downhill. We get to the point now where we're a little bit scrapped on money because we have no income, but we're still you know maintaining our bills. And I think, you know, I mean, I'd come to you people, maybe, you know, maybe it's possible to give us a hand with some money or something like that, because we are going to be there. And I think it is, is really something that Wappinger should be proud of, because it is, it is a thing for a family gathering. And with this new room, the Ralph Holt room, we're going to be teaching our young about their history of sports. So that's all I have to say. And, you know, I just uh, thank you for letting us come and talk before you. And, you. Uh, you know, have a good night, everyone. Thank you very Thank you much. Bill. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you very much. And I will add that uh, the sports museum, like most activities here in the town and elsewhere in the United States, depends on volunteers. You know, they're always looking for volunteers. Uh, we've had some uh, great uh, volunteers in the uh, Cavasini family that has done a tremendous amount of the renovation work uh, and uh, fix up, you know, this museum today is a direct result of what, you know, Joey and his dad Dan have done, you know, to help make that you know, work. And it's an amazing display. That's why I also had uh, taped Bill uh, so that the town could see so much more about what's going on at the sports museum. And I think where the water and heating is important, that would allow them to operate uh, maybe all year round uh, rather than during the more uh, temperate times of the year. So we'll be certainly talking about it more as we have uh, in, in the past. Uh, any, Bill, I think you had your hand uh, that you wanted to raise. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, our position obviously has been uh, to support the sports museum. Just to clarify, uh, Pre-COVID, uh, obviously we reduced the rent because there was a uh, an issue with affordability and there was an issue with uh, use because of capital improvements that were needed. So that was just the first step in my opinion. Uh, I think what we need to entertain um, as we move into budget is a similar uh, type of uh, subsidy uh, that we are doing with the uh, Wappagers Historical Society. Uh, this is yet another historical entity uh, within our town that I believe uh, deserves uh, to be supported uh, formally within the budget uh, and within the uh, legal uh, parameters. Uh, and I, I'd like to look at doing that as we head into budget. I also would like to look at, um, based on our finances in this fiscal year, uh, if we have the ability to provide any level of support to this organization, uh, just coming out of COVID, just coming out of, uh, you know, 18 to 24 months of dormancy as a result of COVID, uh, being unable to uh, uh, sustain, uh, uh, you know, at the level that they should. Uh, I know that uh, we have received uh, funding uh, uh, for the purposes of subsidizing um, entities that uh, were affected adversely by COVID. However, we have to see what the stipulations within the law are. I think that if we can find some funding in this fiscal year and then plan accordingly, and you may have done this in your budget already right. with respect to the next fiscal year, uh, I think that that's important. Now, that's just the tip of the iceberg, though. From a capital uh, improvement uh, perspective, I think we need to add this to our workshop. We need to get, um, we're gonna have a workshop meeting scheduled for, where we can sit down and roll up our sleeves and we can look at where we stand currently with the infrastructure of that building. Obviously it's more complicated and we don't have the time to sit here and discuss where everything now, but there was a water solution at one point that was temporary uh, and it, we need a permanent water solution and we need a permanent heating solution and climate control uh, solution because there are artifacts within that building that are temperature sensitive. So that needs to be part of a conversation of a workshop meeting where we can really sit right. down and have productive, right. and it's an open public meeting, anyone's welcome to come to it, but yeah. right now we have such a heavy agenda we can't get into that. Right. But in conclusion, um, I'm hoping that we can entertain uh, those particular things right. I brought up. Thank you. Bill, to your point, you know, there is $5,000 I've put into the tentative budget for 2023, so we can certainly discuss that in other ideas that have been discussed already. Thank you. Councilwoman or other two councilmen? Any comments? 
No, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I, I saw that you put 5,000 in the budget, so that's a great solution. Maybe we can use some of that COVID money, as Bill suggested. We have about 2.4 million. <coughs> um, certainly wouldn't all go towards that, but maybe if there's a way to be able to justify being able to use some of that money towards helping out on uh, this particular yeah. infrastructure. Area. infrastructure within the uh, you know, park it's, may yeah. be applicable. Obviously, the COVID money comes with a number of stipulations, and we're not going to get yeah. into it right now. But as you can imagine, federal money that comes in for the purposes of COVID, there's only certain things you can spend right. it on. I believe capital improvements and capital projects uh, such as water and sewer, whether it Correct. be municipal or whether it be within one of our properties, may be applicable. We can discuss it further at a workshop. Right. Thank you. Right. Yep. Right. We'll discuss it at a workshop yeah. at this point. Okay, I, we you. have so much going on okay. tonight. This, I think we're all yeah. in agreement. It is a positive thing for the town. And we'll see what we can do to help everybody. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the public portion of the meeting. Uh, this, this portion is to discuss any agenda items uh, because of the length of uh, the <coughs> agenda items, many budget items, so forth, who are going to you know, limit the discussion per person to two minutes each and uh, we'll also uh, you know uh, you know handle any redundancy in it so when you come up after our motion to open it identify your name and address and the uh, agenda item that you wish to to talk on so do i have a motion to open i'll the make a motion portion? to open public second motion second all in favor aye, aye. aye. any nays or abstentions <laughs> seeing none the motion uh, passes so now if anybody wants to talk about any agenda item in portion six and seven Please come up to the podium, identify yourself, uh, your name, your residence, and then uh, we'll limit it to two, two minutes each. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Hogan. Uh, I'm a teacher at Ketchum High School. Do you identify the topic? Uh, budget, agenda item. Agenda, budget, and parks and recreation. Uh, parks and recreations, okay. Uh, this is probably about the baseball. This is, uh, I issue. sent the email right. last week that you and I would I would request that you hold off on that because the school district has requested to discuss this at, at I, the same I, time. I'm here not on behalf of the school okay. district. I know, but they've requested to have the discussion. So I would, my suggestion to the board is, is that we table this and we have a discussion later on so we can have a full and open discussion on this point. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Am I going to be notified? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. You know, probably in the next board meeting. Thank okay. you. I Thanks. appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Anybody okay, else? Okay, come on. Next. Good evening. I'm um, John Gorman, 6 Thompson Terrace, um, about the Deer Park or Deer Ridge proposal. I come here as a concerned citizen and a concerned parent. I have two young kids under the age of three that live right on the corner of Pine Ridge and Thompson Terrace now. The reason I moved up here is because I felt it was, or moved here, moved there, I should say, I've been a resident of here 30 years, was I felt that they were safe. I felt that the neighborhood was safe. There wasn't a lot of traffic. There wasn't oversaturation. Our wells were fine. You know, the families were there. People walked around the neighborhood. I look back here, and there are countless faces that I say hello to every day walking in our neighborhoods. But with this proposal, that can be taken away for the sake of non -necess unnecessary development. I totally understand this town needs more housing. But Mr. O'Donnell said it himself, this is not affordable housing. He said the average rent will be $2,100. Yes, I get that, but that's more than, I guarantee you, a lot of people's mortgages in this room. On February, you guys heard how angry people are, and a board member even said, yes, these people are pissed. Yes, we are. There are people here whose livelihoods are gonna be destroyed for unnecessary development. There, uh, you know, everybody that spoke against this was people that, whose livelihoods would be affected. Everybody who spoke for it would benefit financially from the, the development because they work with Mr. O'Donnell or they live in Mr. O'Donnell's properties within miles, not even within miles of the property. I understand the need for housing, but the reason people in this room live in this town is because they like their livelihoods. I guarantee you if this, this proposal was going anywhere near your houses on the board and supervisor, you guys would feel the same way we do. Our neighbor, our, okay, our thank you. I'm sorry to cut you short. It's been okay, two minutes. But, Thanks. Good evening. I'm Matthew Natara, 51 Teresa Boulevard. I spoke before about this, about the gentleman, Mr. O'Donnell. There's three parcels that are in play right now. One's right behind my house. Uh, that one is going to be uh, developed by Ralph, previously of the planning board. 
um, Marinaccio, I believe his last name is, mm -hmm. is that correct? So if you look at these three parcels that are in play, if Mr. O'Donnell were to get his parcel the way that he, he chooses it uh, or wants it to be for uh, housing uh, for some 160 units, if you put those three parcels together, you'd probably be talking in the neighborhood of about 900 units. 900 units on a one lane road each way. You know, it, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. One acre zoning is there. Build your one acre houses, I get it, you know? I mean, if it went to two acres in the plan and you bought the property one acre and you came here and you said, hey, we had two acre zoning now. I, ha I bought this at one acre, you're kind of hurting me. I would understand the discussion. I don't understand this discussion. I just don't get it for an apartment building. That's really what this is. It's like 10 two-story apartment buildings. And then the next one's gonna be behind us. Ralph was talking about 400 townhouses. 400 townhouses. Then Mid Hudson Development Corp is talking about almost 750 units. It's, it's insane. That's, that's all I have to say. I just I hope you guys really consider what that area can, can withstand and what the people there, you know, want. We'd love more neighbors. It's fine. We, we have a great community. Put your one acre houses. All right. Thank you. 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 Don Donardo, 21 Maple Path. I just want to reiterate uh, what these, this gentleman said. And with these three projects, water, 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 you're talking about budgets, taxes, schools, emergency equipment bill, it's going through the roof. Can Old Hopewell Road handle that traffic? I doubt it. You gotta look at this as three projects all in one. I only get three gallons a minute out of my well now. My, my property backs up to uh, Cedar Hill Development, 1,675 feet of it. You know, you're gonna put people out of their houses or you know, we'll all be digging new wells. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Terry Bertolini, 84 Scott Drive uh, in Rockingham. I've lived here for 49 years in my house. Have all sorts of nonsense going on from this board. We have been promised years ago, years and years ago, they would stop this continuing development all over. So why is this even proceeding? Why is this even before us? Also, you have areas down by the museum. You have areas back on Robinson Lane. All empty areas which is not as, um, as built up and as congested as this area that you've chosen. I do not understand it. It is bizarre, absolutely bizarre. It's going to strongly impact our water and sewer. And I can't honestly say that I trust Anybody here is going to take care of the problems that could ensue from this. I personally had problems with our curbs, which were taken care of for years by not the last, before the last highway department supervisor. All of a sudden he had no money and it was a problem when all our curbs were broken. Our curbs were, were built with, with a, certain, a, a certain way that the water flows due to them. It's different than places that don't have curbs. You, it directs the flow of water, otherwise you have floods. I had a fight to get a few places, that, you know, have the curbs put in a few places. A fight, like, you're not entitled to that. They did it for years, so I don't trust that you're gonna fix any problems that come with, from this. So you really, really need to think about it, because quite honestly, people can, can cause, can go together, they can, can uh, develop a class action lawsuit against the town. It could do a lot of different things. So please, please think carefully. Think carefully. Bad enough, we have uh, whatever it is, the mosque or whatever is going up on the corner there by all angels. That's going to. Okay, I, the, I can't time, even imagine. Time's up. Sorry, time's up. Thank you. Well, it's going to create a lot more traffic. Yeah, okay. Hi, my name is Louise Basso. I live on 116 Van Voris Terrace, and my property backs up to where they want to build the apartments, and uh, I don't want my well contaminated. I don't want more water into my basement, and I don't want a bunch of strange people walking onto my property. 
and all walking all through my woods. It's and, and the traffic is insane now. You're talking a thousand more cars between Old Hallwell and Cedar Hill Road. That's crazy. You can't get out of Pine Ridge now. And uh, I just like the, the other man said, single family homes, that's different. But apartments, that's just too much. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Hi there, my name is John Tolliver. I've been a resident of Wappinger for 30 some odd years and on Pine Ridge Drive for 12 years. And I've got two concerns about the development. Uh, number one was uh, when I was looking at the plans for it, I saw that even though the apartments don't have any kind of terraces or anything else, it doesn't look like there's any recreation area for the people. I mean, I, I, uh, I was just wondering, you know, when families move in, which they inevitably will, what are they going to do, um, you know, for outside activities? Is there any plans to build, you know, comparable units like, uh, like White Gate or, or uh, Pavilion, two bedroom, two bath, around the same price range? They have facilities for the people to use. I mean, it doesn't look like this has anything. And then the second thing I was just wondering about was when Mr. O'Donnell came in for the planning board meeting, he had said that he would already gotten permission to tie into the town water and sewer. And I was just wondering who he, well, he, he also said that at the town board meeting, the second one. Um, and I was just wondering who had given him permission. No permission yet. That's what part of his request is for, to be in, okay. included in the water and you know, sewer areas. So okay. there's been no permission, okay. no discussion. Well, anyway, uh, like I said, my concerns that, and then like everybody has mentioned, the traffic on Old Hopewell Road, you know, because Old Hopewell Road was repaved, but it wasn't widened, so it can't support more traffic, um, and we need help. Thank Thanks. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? I'm Barry Kaufman, 24 Scott Drive, and I'm the original owner of that house a little over 52 years. And some of my concerns in reading the little bit that I did about it is, you know, the environmental uh, part of it, you know, the, you know, you've mentioned uh, the fact of maybe tying, tying into the town water and town sewerage or they're going to have their own wells, their own septics. Concerned about, you know, just what's going to happen to the area. And the other thing, like several of the other people have mentioned, the traffic on Old Hopewell Road gets pretty heavy at, uh, you know, the rush hour time, and you're going to add that many people in. And the other thing that was mentioned is it's not really that price-friendly for the people that are here. It's something that's going to draw people from other areas that are more financially set than a lot of our local residents. And I think you're sort of cutting a lot of us out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bernadette Bodie. I live at 12 Winfield Terrace. Um, I was looking at your brochure about the town of Wappinger when I came in tonight, and it talks about the beautiful natural resources that we can all enjoy. Well, this project would take away our enjoyment of the natural resources in our neighborhood. We don't have a, a neighborhood park off of Pine Ridge Road. We have our streets. And many of our people use those streets on a daily basis. Our children ride bicycles on those streets. They play basketball on their basketball hoops out there. Um, our people walk dogs on those streets. You're going to be jeopardizing their lives if you add the congestion of 164 apartments to our roads. The roads were not built to support that kind of traffic. The roads are hilly. The roads are twisty and curvy. They're narrow. They're not suitable for the, the, the quantity of traffic that we have today. I have had so many near misses on Pine Ridge Road coming up from Old Hopewell past where Mr. O'Donnell's property would be reaching out. It will, someone will die there on that street, I can assure you, and it will be the responsibility of whoever approves this project. 
Secondly, um, people have addressed the problem of well water. Um, my well has been wonderful for the last 30 years. I have never had issues with my water, and I don't want this project to cause issues with my well. When the other development that was put in between Pine Ridge and All Angels was created, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, my house shook with the blasting that was going on that far away. This development project would put that kind of blasting much closer to my house and everyone else's house in this room. We're, it's a unique geological area that we're in. We have this shale bed under all of our properties that runs through. So when you start blowing that up to put in mammoth apartment complexes, 12 units, 12 unit buildings, 16 unit buildings, you're gonna have problems with the geological structure and you're gonna contaminate our well water and change the quality of the water that we get from our wells. That's an adverse effect. This town has been blessed with a comprehensive plan that was put into effect by your predecessors back in 2010. And that comprehensive plan guides the development that we're looking at today. That comprehensive plan has earmarked this property as medium density. It does not allow for apartments. It does not allow for the development in this nature. Okay. Thank you. Time is up. I'm sorry. I have a lot more to say. That's sir. right. Yeah. yeah. Two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. There are a lot of problems with this plan, okay. which would have legal Thank ramifications. You. Thank you. Well, let me let me just say one thing because I, I said this last time and I'll say it again because I, I don't appreciate people making threats because I don't think you understand the process. We're not putting anything in here. This is an individual that owns a piece of property who wants to have it rezoned to allow for a use that's not currently allowed. So this is part of the democratic process to hear you folks and to listen to your input. There's no preconceived notions here at all on this board, I can tell you that. <laughs> Although I feel as though people think there are, okay? But I can tell you that this is a piece of property that's zoned a specific way right now. It's not uncommon that people that own property will request a rezone, and this is the method by which that rezone application is entertained. So. That's all we're doing here. We don't have a resolution here tonight to rezone the property. It's not my intention to uh, make any decisions on my own without hearing everyone's input. And if you get cut off at two minutes, feel free to send us in writing your additional comments and we can enter it into the record. This right. way, if you have other points, you can be included. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? This is as a private citizen, not as a legislator. Yes, supervisor, Correct. it is. Okay. Yes, supervisor, it is. Yes, okay, thank you. Joseph D. Cavasini, 166 Rosewood Drive, town of Wappinger. Um, I'm here to talk about overdevelopment in general in our town. For example, on the agenda tonight is a proposal that will probably be given by either Mr. Alexander or Mr. O'Donnell, I'm looking forward to hearing it, on an existing R40, R80 zone property in our town, medium density, to be potentially transferred to a RMF5 zone. In looking back at our history of our town and, and seeing how we were laid out, the Cedar Hill Pine Ridge area was the first laid out subdivision, first laid out neighborhood in our town, 1950 or so. In the 1970s, 1980s, the town opted for a cluster zone of apartments. You see those today in Whitegate Pavilion. Those have now become condominiums privately owned within units. Those complexes are located outside of the means of you know, everyday travel, transit services, so on and so forth. They're not within walking distance. They're not within those zones. And again, as referenced in our town's comprehensive plan, which was adopted in 2010 and ultimately amended subsequently up until 2017, that property is called to be a medium density zone. The main objective of any elected official especially the Wappinger Town Board, is to protect our property values of the residents who live here. 
I will bring up, yes, I am an elected official, but I'm elected to represent the people who live here, not the people who don't. And I'm afraid of the unintended, unintended consequences of allowing potentially 164 units in a property in a zone that currently allows 30 give or take homes. That's what it is currently zoned for. And any sort of proposal that comes before the town would change that site from potentially 30 give or take homes. I'm sorry, time's up, Joey. Supervisor, Joey, with, time with is all up. respect, I give you three minutes. Supervisor, time with is, all due respect, if you came before the Duchess up. County Legislature, I'd up. give you more time. Time Can is up, time? Joey. I've given the fare to everybody. It's all right, Supervisor. No, Joey. With all due respect, I will back then. I appreciate okay, thank the time. You. Thank you. Thank you. Again, just put, I've been in this situation myself, right? And we have to do this for the greater good. Just put your writing, put your comments in writing. Right. Submit them to the town clerk so we can get them in the record, okay? Sorry. I know it sounds kind of harsh. We gotta, you know, they gavel people up. Yes. Yeah, you can e email yes. right to the town clerk. Yes. And we can't, unfortunately, we can't yield time back to other people either because <laughs> we'll be here all night. Go ahead. But we will see your comments. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. It will be, of course. Certainly. No, certainly. no, no. Yeah. And whatever. We'll see them, yeah. Anybody that emails their comments, the information will be sent to the board members. Sure. Yep. So we will we, all see it. So we've actually free. had some. We've actually had some sent direct, direct yeah. right. to but, us already. But sure. people, so that's fine as well. We want you to be aware of that. You have that right. Please take advantage of it. And we do you read your here, comments. You're the residents. The other thing is, if you email it to us directly, it's not necessarily going to get into the record. So you can email it to the town clerk, CC us. This way it's entered into right. the record for the meeting. Thank you. Identify Sorry. yourself. Sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. You interrupted. Good evening. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I reside on Winfield Terrace, and I'd like to speak on the topic of the Deer Ridge proposal. Thank I'm you. one of the many homeowners that will be affected in the housing uh, in that area by this housing project. At the very start of the project, I reached out to the previous landowner. Uh, I didn't know that she already sold the pro uh, parcel to Mr. O'Donnell. I asked during our conversation if she was told what the property would be used for, and she was told it'll be a couple houses built on there. Now I know legally that has no bearing on stopping any kind of project from going through, but it raises the question of what will be said or what will be done to get a bulldozer into those woods by Mr. O'Donnell and the owners of that property now. Um, as Mr. Cavasini was saying, you guys as the town board are responsible for making the decision for the people who live in the community and not people who do not live in the community. You represent us as the community members. Uh, Councilman Beal, you stated that Mr. O'Donnell is currently asking for his parcel to be rezoned to use in a way which is not currently allowed. Correct. Part of the democratic process, that's exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. We the people are asking you as the town council to represent us in the way we wish to be represented mm -hmm. and the way I feel and I believe on behalf of everybody in this room, the Deer Ridge Project, we're asking you guys to make sure that our residential areas stay residential. Okay, thank you. Um, if you are for or against this project, I just ask that it's shown when the time comes to voice your opinion uh, as to whether or not this project should be converted over from residential to multifamily or remain the way it is and keep our residential areas residential. Okay, so, thank you. Thank, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank thanks. You. Any other comments on any agenda item? Yes, Kevin. I'm Kevin Hathorne. I live in Rockingham and I am the president of the Wappinger Veterans Advisory. I'm responsible for the banners that are on the utility poles, as well as memorial, and, uh, memorial bricks that are gonna be placed. I'm here to talk about the, the, uh, the banners. I went with a uh, highway mechanic from our highway department to look at a, um, a prospective bucket truck, utility truck with a bucket. It didn't work out. It's a year of Ford trucks that are diesel that are unreliable. The boom on it had a leaky seal. So it, that seems to be the way it's gonna be going. I, uh, Steve Frazier is gonna be talking about, among other things, um, a construction boom. 
and I, I strongly suggest that uh, that's taken into serious consideration because we know that during paving time, the town highway department is not available. This will make it much easier, much quicker to get those, si those banners up and down in uh, real time. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there an option to uh, rent a, a bucket yes. truck? Yeah, like yeah. A I'm, I'm told that that's somewhere in the neighborhood of $400 a week. And how, we many, can, how many weeks does it take you to do it? Well, that? probably four weeks. During during the banner season, maybe six weeks. So this both ends, right? You know, four weeks in front, and correct. In the back. Correct. Right. When do you take them down? Uh, middle of November, right. depending upon the weather. All right. After Steve gives his report, we'll let's we'll make a decision it. tonight yeah. so that they have the ability to take them down. Right. Because you right. spend all this time putting all these banners up, and the last thing we want to do is leave them up in adverse weather right. and right. have them crack. Right. How did so. you get them down last year? Uh, the highway department did it. So right. it's also a safety okay. issue, though. But too. now they, they've got like two or three times as many banners yeah. right. no, more coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's but not it's the still, safety issue yeah. when they put them up and yeah. take them down. So we exactly. have to take Mike can only account. do so much. No, exactly. I understand that, but at the same time, I wanted to know how yeah. it was handled yeah. last year. So thank uh, you. Okay. We'll discuss thank you. further. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank any you. other comments on any agenda? Yes, please. Hi, my name's Bill Rumble, 55 Balfour Drive. I'm living up here now 50 years, so you know how much development I witnessed. <clears throat> My question is, I'm a little confused. We have zoning laws and zoning rules in place for reasons, for overdevelopment or whatever. When a person puts an application in for a rule change, who decides that? Who decides who changes the rules? Well, it's a zone Answer. change, sir. Answer. It's a zone change. So anyone that owns property in this town has the right to apply for a zone change. It comes before this board. This board makes the zone change. Well, in a project this big, mm -hmm. shouldn't this be put on a ballot so that everyone has a say in this? It's illegal. Ooh, wouldn't? It's illegal? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you answered my question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And yes. you elect us to make these decisions. That's why we're here listening to you. Yeah. Any any other comments on any item? <clears throat> okay. I'd just like to ask a question of we're, we're getting the information after the public hearing and after our discussion. Shouldn't we get the information on the projects first? And the other thing, the other point was I made it last time was are you looking at both projects together no. in terms of environmental no. impact? You should. Right now, we're just looking at the one project. That's all you, that's you, before here. You really here. have to look at both yeah. projects uh, in terms of an environmental impact. No. But the reason why I, you know, we allow the comments, one is practice, but also it gives the chance for Mr. O'Donnell to comment on yeah, the yeah, questions. And then, as Mr. Beal said, you can submit other written you know, comments, you know, to us yeah, I'm at just length. Saying in the future, yes. I think it should be the other Thank way you. around. The last okay. thing I think we, you should pay attention to it and insist upon some low-income housing because it's impossible for our young, our young adults to get places to rent out and, and to have. And $2,200 a month for a two-bedroom apartment is not something that, that our young people can afford. That, that issue has been discussed and will be discussed more in the board. Thank you. Any other comments? So I, I want to make a comment. Yeah, please. So just because the applicant is coming forward, they have that right to do that, as Councilman Beale said, that does not necessarily mean we're going to approve it. So again, this is a democracy, so I want the audience to understand that. Just because they bring it forward doesn't necessarily mean we're going to approve it. Again, that's what you elect yeah. us to do, and hopefully we're going to do the right thing. Sometimes it comes across that way because we have to have these uh, proposals and these public portions Sometimes it seems like this is a done deal. This is not a done deal. We're following. Actually, this is we're up, this is the second time we've had an opportunity. Actually, for the, third, I think. or third time. Yeah. So, uh, we're trying to be uh, overly transparent. We're trying to be fair. Remember, we have to be fair. I understand your point with respect to those that live in the neighborhood. We have to be non-biased from the perspective of the application, right? So as the individual who applies for the rezone, we have a responsibility to listen to both sides, and we have to be fair. We have to make the decision that's in the best interest of our constituents, right? 
but we have to be fair. So please don't assume that there's any decisions that have been made at all, because there have not been. In fact, uh, again, this evening, we're hearing you for the second or third time, and also we're gonna hear from the applicant again, who can right. potentially uh, address any of the questions or concerns that you may have had. Sir, I have a question, I'm sorry. Is there a time frame on the decision? No. No. There hasn't been a formal proposal yet to us to the board with respect to the water and sewer or the zoning change. We have not, as Councilman Beal mentioned, we have not received anything at this point in time. Okay, you know, this is more because I received a letter from, you know, Mr. O'Donnell requesting to have a hearing, which we would honor the request for any property owner, you know, if they needed to make a change or wanted to make a change. So that's what we're doing, you know, tonight. So, you know, and then we'll let Mr. O'Donnell, you know, have 10 minutes, you know, to, to talk about this. But yes, the board has, it's really open to hear more comments because there are people that moved in or people that have other interests. And so that's what we're trying to do. Yes, yeah, yeah please, come on up. I understand that, you know, we're, we're here for Mr. O'Donnell tonight, but I urge you to take into consideration all three of these projects because they're right on top of one another. And it's, it's all the traffic is right there. The water problems are right there. The sewer problems are right there. You have to look at all three. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. My name is Rick Dixon, 215 Cedar Hill Road. Uh, one of the things we're now looking at, too, is the schooling. He says that last time he spoke, he says he doesn't have a lot of kids in his apartments. Who's to determine that? You have two bedroom apartments that you're not going to put 164 extra kids into our schools that we don't have the room for, okay? I said everything else I understand too, but that you have to look into. It's, it's, our schools are hurting right now for enough room. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? I have a motion to close the public portion. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion well, second. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, we got one more, sorry. One more. Okay. My name is Lynette Maurer, 118 Thornton Terrace, Wappinger Falls. <clears throat> Second house built here on Cedar Hill area in 1954, it was completed. We have environmental to look at. We need to look at wildlife that has run, has a, uh, at which we're losing our wildlife, we've lost all of our deer due to the deer uh, infection of last year. And those of us that have had, have ponds or water areas, we've been pulling deer out of our ponds. <clears throat> I had the fortunate opportunity as a child to ride through the lands of which apartment buildings are being proposed. There are only several areas where apartments and flat area, and that's very near the power lines. The rest of the property going back up Cedar Hill, Pine Ridge, Van Voris, around to Thornton Terrace and Pine Ridge Drive, that is all very hilly and shale properties. It's not near the road, and my, <clears throat> understanding is if you would like on that property, which is gorgeous, it's beautiful, it should be single family homes with two plus acres so that the family has room to, to enjoy their, their, the environment that I grew up with. However, putting apartment buildings in there we are going to be hearing a lot of booms and bangs and our houses and our structures can very well start to crack. And <clears throat> the property owner prior to the present owner has already screwed this town by selling of her lot. I'm sorry, I need to cut you off. You had your food okay. and you come. So I'm sorry, Lynette. Thank you. Okay. Please think about the Thank water, you. the highway, and the the environment and the livestock. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have to say one more thing. I, I really.
really do. If you do press this to go forward, we would like, our community would like to have gates, double gates with, I'm sorry, I'm a traumatic brain injury survivor and it takes me a minute. Take your time. Double gates with double chains and locks so that there is not any traffic forged out onto Van Voris, Pine Ridge, Forest View. There's no cut through. Those gates are to be locked except for emergency services. And every, when my father was brought recreation to the town of Wappinger Falls and built your many parks, and get every, every single development needed to give X amount and every developer needed to give X amount of property for a playground and for a park. I don't see that coming forth. So, Mr. O'Donnell knows me from long ago. My father was, gave him his first start held the note for he and several other builders. And my father said, between these fine homes that we're building at Mowerbrook and the townhouses next door, we don't want traffic going back and forth. And what was built? Double gates, double chains, and double locks, okay. except for emergency services. Anything else? Okay. We have a motion. Move. I'll second it. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. You know, thank you. That closes the public portion of the meeting. So we'll move into our agenda items. And the first item uh, is approval of Chris Maurer's Eagle Scout project you know, bill. Yeah, just uh, with respect to the uh, discussion items, uh, I respectfully request, as you mentioned, that we do minutes. a 10 minute time limits right. on the discussion items so that we're not here till uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, Chris Maurer, is, is, is Chris here or, or Ken here? No? Um, all right, just real quick on this one. Um, Joey, actually, you had worked with this candidate, this, this Eagle Scout candidate. If you could just step up for a second. Uh, Joey had previously worked with this Eagle Scout candidate, Chris Maurer, with yes. respect to his project. Real quick, uh, what was the summation of the project? Yes, so this was to take one of our Eagle Scout checklist items off the, uh, the list there. Uh, we have the upper parking lot over at Carnwath Farms. We have a roadway that goes up to the upper field there. This was to add a split rail fence to stop vehicles from driving up that way, formalize an actual trailhead. We have benches that are in the carriage house. Good. That this board authorized its purchase for. So we would take potentially two of those benches. We have a kiosk in there that was purchased by Greenway and just formalize a trail head trailhead at that site. All right, so trailhead at Carnwath on the upper parking lot, right? That's and, correct, yes. I uh, just want to make sure this, this was something that uh, there was some miscommunication, you know, because uh, with Joey changing jobs and uh, we didn't want Chris hanging out there in the wind because he had to actually uh, get things. There's a plan he had to put together for his right. Eagle uh, project. So I want to make a motion that we authorize Chris Maurer, Eagle Scout candidate Chris Maurer, to proceed with the work on the trailhead uh, located at the upper level parking lot at Carnwath Farms. And that's per the proposal he submitted that Joey had reviewed, I reviewed, and it's all fine. And there's I'll no fiscal it. impact so on the town, okay. right? No fiscal no. impact. No okay. fiscal impact. I'll second it then. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing the motion passed. I think it's already started. It, right? it has, but we had yes. to form. Yeah, we, we need this the the formal formality. approval tonight. That's so. the formality. Thank yes. you, folks. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. O'Donnell, it's your turn. Ten minutes. Yes, ten minutes. You can always address more in writing, but ten minutes. I, I gave it to you all in writing. And then include your attorney. Um, good evening. My name is Craig O'Donnell. I live on Wheeler Hill Road here in Wappinger. I am a town Wappinger resident. Um, I've been building houses here in this uh, town for over 40 years, along with um, roads, sewer systems, shopping plazas, 
apartment buildings, et cetera, et cetera. You know, first I could address uh, uh, the comments from uh, my neighbors. Sure. Um, you know, one gentleman from Teresa Boulevard already mentioned that uh, um, these, this project or my project, my project wouldn't affect Teresa Boulevard in the least. Uh, nobody's going to leave Deer Ridge and go to Teresa Boulevard. Matter of fact, I would doubt uh, very few people would even take um, Cedar Hill Road. But, you know, not saying that would never happen. Uh, the gentleman from Maple, what is it, Maple Lane? Um, about his water system. I'm going to be bringing water, central water and sewer, close to uh, Pine Ridge, Van Voris, Winfield, all the way up to the top of the hill if this thing uh, uh, is ever built. The, um, the lady from uh, Van Voris Terrace about her well contamination, if this was to be built as I propose, I would be bringing water and sewer there. There would be no reason to dig a hole deeper than four feet or, uh, or drill any wells. So uh, drainage to her property would be non-existent because my property is downhill from hers. As far as people walking on our property, um, I don't know about you, but I don't have my neighbors don't walk on, on my property unless I give them permission. So I see that as far-fetched. Uh, the gentleman about the wreck areas. Uh, yes, there is nothing shown on the plan. However, um, if I was to make an application for a site plan, uh, there would be hiking trails, playgrounds, uh, bike paths, all this stuff would all be incorporated into the site. So yeah, you don't see it on the, on the current rendering, which is all, all it is is a rendering. Um, I've asked for uh, not permission to tie in, but to be included in the water and sewer district. If I was, then I would probably be uh, granted uh, permission to tie into the water and sewer. I've already had um, uh, contact from the sewer commission saying that the, uh, the capacity of my sewer would be treated. And I've spoken to the, um, I guess, water commissioner in Waffinger. He says there's plenty of water to, uh, to um, supply this uh, project if it was to ever be built. Um, Barry Kaufman on Scott Drive, he talked about uh, the wells, the septic. Uh, again, I'm going to be bringing water and sewer in if this property was to be built as it is zoned currently, that would be all uh, wells and septics would be built back there. Um, that would definitely interfere with the current water uh, table that exists now, uh, along with the septic systems, which have to be designed twice the size of the ones that uh, you and I are, are used to seeing. Um, Ms. Bodie on Winfield, uh, my next door neighbor, I can't ever see anybody going on to Winfield Terrace. I already spoke to Lynette Maurer about I could uh, put a gate on Winfield so there would be no traffic in and out of there. So I can't see Winfield ever changing in the least. We would probably do a gate like we did in Maurer Brook with the uh, fire access in case there was an emergency or whatever the case was. And we put a, uh, a crash gate there. Bill knows about those. Um, Lynette talked about uh, the parks, uh, giving land to the parks. Well, the land, uh, giving land to the parks went out a long time ago. You know, your dad used to do it. Yes. I've done it. But now they want money to improve the, the parks that they currently have. And I've already made an offer to do that. I've made an offer to make a contribution to the Rockingham Water and Sewer District so that they could do improvements to the sewer system that's uh, currently in disrepair in Rockingham. And I, know, I know there's a few uh, Rockingham uh, residents here. I know the pump down there needs work. The whole thing needs work. And I've already spoken to uh, uh, Camo Pollution, who runs our water and sewer here in the town. And they uh, have pinpointed areas that they need uh, work on. And I've uh, incorporated um, funds to be directed towards that in the, in the whole plan. Mr. Dixon mentioned about the schools. Well, I've been in contact with Watford Central School District. The school district is down 
Uh, I know that, uh, the supervisor Bonk has already spoken to the town board, who um, he has been uh, uh, stated that uh, uh, enrollment is down, it's shrinking every year, and I have spoken to him, and he said any additional school children would be more than welcome in the school district. There would be no uh, crowding of classes, and this can all be, uh, you can speak to all these people yourself. If, if you don't, uh, if, if you think I'm giving you some type of story, I've already researched all this stuff. So uh, as far as the schools, and then the school, uh, somebody mentioned about the number of uh, students. Um, the way we came up with the number of students is because I own other properties that are just like this. We look at the demographic, we count how many year there are per unit, and on this project here, even though it's 160 uh, some units, would uh, probably only generate uh, maybe 25 to 35 students, believe it or not. I don't know, that's the numbers. That's, the, that's what all the other projects are. Okay, down. okay, okay, let, let yep. Mr. O'Donnell speak. So that's all the, what all the other projects uh, that are uh, almost identical to this project, that's, that's the rate of, uh, but even if it was more, uh, the school, uh, Washington Central Schools can handle it. I've already spoken to the uh, superintendent and who's uh, corroborated that. So, again, I think I can address everybody's concern um, with what, uh, other than I just don't want it. It's, I can't, I can't, you know, that one or, you know, I don't want people walking through my backyard. I mean, three more minutes, I've already, Greg. I've already stated that I would put uh, no trespassing signs around the entire perimeter. I don't see people walking in other people's backyard. I'm going to have to. Uh, yeah, I want to get a couple minutes in here. Mr. Alexander, speak for. Uh, we don't have enough time for you, would you? <laughs> so for no, record, please. You know, we have three minutes. Yeah, my record. My, so for the record, my name is Neil Alexander. I'm a partner at Cuddy and Fader. So we're early in the process. What we're looking to ask for the town board to do, and what we're making request is, we're looking to have this property remapped to the RMF five from its current zoning. We're looking to be included in the water and sewer district. And then, really what happens is, once those decisions are made, then we can actually make an application for a multifamily project on the property, to, which will go through site, pl site plan review, which will have a traffic study, which will have a school resource study, will have an emergency management study. But we can't even get to that, which will have a cut fill balance for all our roads. We'll have all the grading. We'll have all the injury. We can't get there. And I'll tell you what the other aspect that I think is really interesting and why you should be entertaining this and why you should be looking to circulate notice of your intent to be lead agency on an application that involves the remapping of this property. And I'm running out of time. But I was looking at the town of Wappinger uh, zoning code, or as I could call it, impediments to fair housing in the town of Wappinger. Basically what it looks at, if you look at the town of Wappinger zoning map and you look at all the RMF property in the town, there are only 14 areas in town. They're small pockets. And if you look at them, polarity have already been developed. And of the ones that haven't been developed, most of those are not on sewer or water. I, you, you know, I haven't tried, I haven't, your scales are different, so it doesn't readily look, but those maps are on your website. On top of that, you look at your scheduled dimensional regulations. You don't allow, allow structures over 35 feet that are residential in your entire town. Multifamily is considered a proxy for affordability, period. Just look at the Berenson decision, especially in the footnote. 30 seconds. So ultimately, at the end of the day, there are 13,500 acres zoned residential in the town of Wappinger. 340 of which are zoned multifamily. That's it. Less than 3%. So that's the xenophobia, no, one more right? That Eight, we all ten. know that sits here <laughs> and rests here. That's your opinion, Neil, please. Have respect At for the At the end board. of the day, you have 348. Okay. 10% of Time's your up. housing that's been developed in your town. And if you read your comp plan, I'm going to just end on that note. If you read your comp plan, okay, please from 2010, it says flat. It says okay. 
Okay, just submit that in writing. Just submit that in writing, okay? Thank you. Put it in time, but at the end of the day, you took Okay, okay, please, please, Neil, Neil, come on. Thank you. It's your False Claims Act. Thank you. Neil, if you're trying to make an argument for a zone change, you're doing a bad job. I'll tell you that right now. Don't don't insult don't insult don't insult the board. I will tell you that. Yes, you are. Okay, yes, you okay. are. You're calling the board. I didn't you're calling the board Neil, xenophobes. Neil, let's okay. Please. Don't call the board xenophobes. Wait, no. You just Neil. called the board xenophobic. Neil, did you're I done. Yes, you did. The board let's go. Yes, Neil, stop it. Neil, stop arguing. Don't do that, Neil. Okay, Dude, you're done. Was, yes, sir. Thank we'll put it in writing. Put it in writing, please. Is there anybody else? That's it. That That's it. Okay, Make thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next item is establishing the fall board workshop. This is what we were talking about before. I'm proposing November 12th. It's a simple thing of you know, having a meeting that we need to have to discuss have to capital here. planning. Uh, this is uh, for, uh, I'm proposing November the 12th. That, that would be the equivalent right? to a board uh, meeting. That's just, uh, it works for me. Let, me, let me just move for a one minute recess. Okay, thank you. Yeah, can we? All in favor? Okay, one minute recess. Thank you. Yes.